Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. First of all, let me just mention, you have perfect attendance as a group. We've done a lot of workshops, and I said to Rashida, you know, we may miss one or two people whose plans change. Well, nobody's plans change tonight. <laughs> so that's a good sign for our program tonight. No, 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 don't look at it that way. Now, we could look at it that way, but we're not going to. You couldn't resist. There's one in every crowd. Um, <laughs> my name is Connie Spiros, and on behalf of the Friends of the Milton Public Library, which is our, there, we are your hosts for this evening, I want to welcome you to the aromatherapy session. And you can, I'm sure, already smell something very, very lovely. Maybe you can't yet, but we've been up here enjoying it already. Um, I want to just say this is one of many workshops that we've just started doing in the last six months. And the reason we're doing them for the first time this season is because we got a lovely grant at year end um, last year from Suzette and David Standring. And Suzette happens to be with us tonight. So I want to, um, I want to personally thank her because we've, we've been doing programs of all sorts, you know, the typical author talks and um, painting classes and um, but this is a different kind of program, and we're finding the attendance is so high for programs like this that we're on to something. So thank you, Suzette, for, for your very, very nice donation. Um, so I'm actually, other than to welcome you, I'm going to pass, your, uh, pass your, the uh, agenda or the table on to Suzette Standring, who's going to introduce our speaker. Hi, everybody. Isn't this fun? I'm so excited. I just want to introduce Rashida Bowman. She's a very talented holistic practitioner. She works at the Sacred Self in Canton, and she is an expert in body cleanse, and she is a certified Reiki practitioner. And she has studied and interned at the New England Herbal Academy. And tonight, she brings her talents with helping you put together wonderful essential oil combinations that will be customized to your need. So thank you all for coming tonight, and I'm going to turn it over to Rashida Bowman. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. So thank you. Thank you guys all for coming out tonight. Uh, it shows just great effort on your part to come out and present. I also want to thank Suzette and Connie again for having me here today to kind of kind of like introduce you all to the world of essential oils or aromatherapy. There's so many different names for it. It's called aromatic. So there's a lot of different names for it. So we're going to kind of dive in today into the world and kind of give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek about what essential oils are, why we use them, how we use them. So has anybody here familiar with essential oils? Is it, a lot of people are starting to learn about the essential oils and starting to dab into the essential oils. Um, is there anyone who, so pretty much everyone has never used essential oils here? Oh, that's great. I love newbies. Newbies are great. So, yes, you use them. Okay, so we have an expert over here. No. <laughs> no. So um, essential oils, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about essential oils today and why they're so useful. So let's just get started. So today, as Suzanne had did such a beautiful introduction of who I am. So basically, like she said, my name is Rashida Bowman. Uh, I'm a, holi a certified holistic health practitioner. And I work at the Sacred Self out of Canton, Massachusetts. And um, I've been doing this line of work for such a long time. I know I might look young to you, so it might look like I've been doing this as a lab, but I have. <laughs> but I've been doing it, um, I've been into holistic medicine for about eight years now. And I've been actually practicing and studying essential, er uh, essential oils for about, probably for almost going on four years now. Um, I love essential oils. We use it in my house. I rave about it to everybody that I see. It's one of the first things I go to. I call it like a first aid kit that I go to in my cabinet if there's any other issues that's happening inside the house. So what we're going to do is I'm going to explain to you what is an essential oil. So an essential oil is a fragrant substance derived from the plants. 
So essentially, uh, what it is, it's a pharmaceutical grade natural remedy with incredible power. So it's extremely, extremely powerful. And we're going to get into that slides later where I'm going to talk about how powerful it is, how to actually use it, and you have to be in the precautionary uh, steps that we need to take when we're using the essential oils. Uh, it's concentrated properties of the herb. And also, it's derived from pretty much the entire parts of the plant. You can get it, uh, basically, the essential oils is coming from the roots, the plants, the stems, um, the rind as well, the resins. So pretty much all of the essential oil parts are used when they, when they come into making the essential oils. And um, how much does it actually take to make an essential oil? So a lot of people will ask me, well, Rashida, why is a bottle of rose? So a bottle of rose, pretty much this size, will cost you about $100. And the reason being, if you look on the first item where it says rose, it takes 60,000 roses to produce one ounce of oil. Or basically 30, 60 roses to make one drop. So that, takes, that requires a lot of, a lot of roses. Um, so, and because you're getting the concentrated formula of the rose itself, it is pricey, so the higher, so the more quantity it takes, the actually the higher the price is. But the 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 um, the therapeutics of using the essential oils are phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So lavender takes 220 pounds of lavender to, to produce seven pounds of oil, and citrus takes um, pretty much 5.5 tons of produce to do one pound of oil. And peppermint uh, takes 256 pounds of peppermint leaf just to make one pound of oil. So basically, just to give you a, a, better, a better picture of this, one drop of peppermint oil is equivalent to you drinking about 20, it's, it's probably equivalent to you drinking about 24 to 26 cups of peppermint tea. So for one drop. So that's why we're going to talk about how the, the little, the smallest amount is all you need. You don't need to do a lot of essential oils. So your bottle of essential oils do go a long, long way whenever you are using the essential oils. And the general rule of thumb is essential oils is actually 75 to 100% to 100 times stronger than herbs. So that is the reason why you're using very, very small doses of essential oils. So in doses, I mean drops. We're using just tiny drops of essential oils that will actually pack a huge impact therapeutically. They help with symptoms, um, and they help with, any, with different ailments that, are, that pretty much are plaguing us today in today's uh, society. How are essential oils extracted? So, this is a list of how they're extracted. The first one is infrarage. Infrarage is actually the way they used to extract it ancient years ago back in, in the Egyptian time. So infrarage was the way, so what they would do, they would almost make a pork sandwich. So they would do a thin layer of pork, they would get a, a clear glass plate, and they'll put the pork, so if they'll put the glass, the pork, the flowers, and then another glass. And they would pretty much make a sandwich and then Within 48 hours, they'll go and check on, the, check on the flowers. And then another 48 hours, they'll go back and check on it. And what they'll do is they'll pour off the residue of what, the, of what was inside the plate and use that oil to go and uh, pretty much help with all the therapeutic uh, issues that was inside of you know, that society at the time. So that was the way they used to do it ancient years ago. That took a long, long, long process time. So they don't do it that way anymore. Um, then we move, have moved to chemical solvents, cold press, carbon dioxide, and steam distillation. Steam distillation is pretty much the primary way that most of the oils are actually produced now. It produced the highest quality and quantity now. So that is the way that uh, pretty much all your oils are, are, are produced. And it is a, a general rule of thumb that you should really uh, take a look and find out the oils that you're getting how they're being processed. If it says being processed through uh, chemical solvent and carbon dioxide, I, would, I, I pretty much would probably stay away from it. You want to go for steam distillation because it gives you the highest therapeutic grade of the oil. The highest therapeutic grade of the oil will actually uh, help you with any of your, uh, your issues and illnesses and symptoms and therefore. So you want to go with the steam distillation. So just to kind of get, give you guys a history of the essential oils. So 
back in the Egyptian era, 4500 BCE, the Egyptians actually used the essential oils for embalming, they used it for rituals, they used it for cleansing, they actually made capsules, they made pa medical uh, medicinal pastes, paste out of it. So they were the, uh, honestly, the masters of essential oils. They knew how to use the essential oils for every aspect of their life. Um, for, a sh for a short period of time, it was mostly the royal, um, anybody who had like a high priest or royal status had the information on how to use the essential oils. Then it kind of got leaked out amongst the, um, the people. So then the Egypt, so at that time, most of the Egyptian people were able to start to learn the recipes and remedies of how to actually get the oils themselves. And then if we uh, go back down to the biblical history, there's over 200 references to the aromatics throughout the Old and New Testament of the Bible. There's the frankincense. Now, the frankincense, there was a frankincense trail. I don't know if anybody ever heard of the frankincense trail, but the frankincense trail was a 2,400 mile radius trail that went from, um, it went from um, Oman, to, um, Oman to, to the border of Israel. So on this trail, they would actually do all, they would transport all the um, frankincense, but also other essential oils as well on camel. And it would take them pretty much weeks to get there. But this was called the frankincense trail. And that trail has been there for, I mean, thousands and thousands of years. And um, that trail is actually still there today. So uh, another, um, other oils that was, that was uh, also referenced in the Bible was myrrh, galbanum, cinnamon, cassia, rosemary, and hyssop. They were all used for anointing, for healing, um, for helping the sick as well. So if you, if you could go back and reference all through the Bible, you'll see all of these listed throughout the Bible. And one of the other, um, I mean, great reference about where the oils that was referenced in the Bible is um, when Jesus was born. What did the three kings bring, uh, bring as gifts? Anybody remember? Frankincense, myrrh, and gold. So that goes to show you why would they bring uh, frankincense and myrrh if it wasn't of high importance, of, you know. So that just kind of goes to show. And then in France, so this is really, this is the key point that I really want you guys to know. So in France in 1920, René Maurice Gattafosse, um, he actually is the person who was the founder of the modern day essential oils that you're seeing here today. He's the one who kind of brought it to uh, to France, to America, and to the United States. He was the one who kind of put it on the map. So what happened was he was in a lab. He was a scientist. He was in a lab, and there was an explosion that happened in the lab. He burnt his hand severely. When he, ran, when he burnt his hand, he rushed and ran over, and thought, he thought he actually put his hand in a glass of, um, not a glass, I'm sorry, but in a tub of water, but it actually was a tub of lavender oil. So immediately his pain went away and he was amazed. And then his, all his scars healed up very, very fast. And he basically started researching at that point what lavender essential oils was and how were they used and why did it work and why was it so powerful and how did it relieve his pain. So from his research is where you see all these bottles now um, that lay before you is because of Renee. So we could all thank Renee for, <laughs> for finding that for us. For, uh, but you know, it's funny because I laugh because I say, well, we'll take Americans to kind of make money off of the whole <laughs> deal. So thanks, Renee. <laughs> but, um, so that kind of gives you a, a, a glimpse of history. There are so many references to essential oils in almost every culture, Indian, through Averti, China, the Yellow Book, uh, the Yellow Emperor has a book that he made of the Yellow Book of, um, of Medicine, and he references um, essential oils in there. He references herbs in there, aromatics in there. So you can find it throughout almost every, honestly, throughout every pretty much country. Safety guidelines for essential oils. One of the one things I always tell everybody, you always, always, always must dilute your oils. You dilute your oils with the carrier oil. And the carrier oil should be something fatty. 
you never mix essential oil with water because it, what it happens is the essential oils, it permeates and it absorbs through a fatty, fatty um, liquid and a fatty substance. So you, if you put it in water, if you put oil and water together, it separates, correct? So it's the exact same thought for essential oils. So say, for example, if you got essential oils and you accidentally put it on your hand and forgot to use a carrier or forgot to get an oil, you don't go, go to the sink and wash it off with water. That's not going to do anything. You need to get some soap. You need to wash it off or go hurry up and get carrier oil, and it will help to blend it in and disperse it. But you never just go get water. Water is not going to be the, the helpful one right there. So the other item is do not, put instant, do not put these inside your ears, your eyes, and your sensitive areas. So I'll have people ask me, well, how do you use it for, because um, I'll give it to um, children for if they have an ear infection. What you do is you'll rub it on the outside of the ear. The, so you'll rub lavender on the outside of the ear, and it will help to, ki it will help to kill um, viruses, bacteria. So lavender oil is amazing. Lavender oil kills bacteria. It's an antifungal. It's an antibacterial. It's a, um, it kills viruses as well. So it is an amazing healing oil. So you would put it around the outside of the ear canal, and you could also put it on a cotton ball and put it on, inside the ear, but you would never actually put the oil inside your ear. You want to keep it away from your eyes because, because it is very, um, the scent is very, very strong inside of the oil. You never want to put it near your eyes, but you can if you have a headache. I always would say if you have a headache, you put it on your temples or on top of your forehead, but you don't want to put it here near your eyes. And you always still, again, you want to make sure it's diluted. Um, the other item is pregnant women, uh, if you're, epileptic, if you're um, epileptic, those with high blood pressure and elderly should consult their health practitioners before using. And um, I do have a handout that kind of goes through and tells uh, which ones. Like if you have high blood pressure, you should stay away from rosemary. You should stay away from thyme. You should stay away from hyssop. But you can use lavender. You could use lemon. So there are oils for everyone to be able to use. Um, was it two, two years ago? I had to remember when I, was, when I was having my son. Two years ago when I had my son, I had, to, um, I had to figure out what oils I was able to use while I was pregnant because I got a cold. And I didn't want to use anything over the counter because the first thing that I look for, as soon as I get sick, as soon as I get a mosquito bite, as soon as I get a headache, I look to my cabinet and I go find what essential oil that I need that's going to work for me naturally. So these are very, very naturally based. These are coming from the plants and the resins again. So, so basically what I would do is I would run there and I would grab it. And so when you're pregnant, you can still use essential oils. If you're a child, you can still use essential oils. You're, just, you're gonna use, like for my son, um, I'll use one drop on the bottom of his foot and I'll mix it with the carrier oil. And I used that, I mean, when he was, I think he was like three or four months old. And I'm not telling you guys to do this, but when he was three or four months old, he got sick. And you can't get a three or four month old um, any medicine. So what I did is I just put a drop of lavender on the bottom of his feet. He, got, he ended up healing faster and much easier because I just did a, just, a little ta just a little dab, a little drop. So it's really, really good. Um, you definitely could consult your, uh, consult your practitioner, but I do have a list that's in front of you of essential oils that you can use for people who, have, uh, who are pregnant, who have issues, have blood pressure and things like that. So there is a list in front of you that you can basically take home with you as well. So, um, but there are essential oils for everyone, for everything and for every symptom. And always make sure you wash your hands with soap after using the essential oils. So, uh, and that is very, very key. And the, very, and the tip that I always tell people is less is best. So it's not, the, it's not when you use more that makes it more potent. It's just using very, very small, minute doses of the essential oils over a course of time will help you. So if I have a cold, I'm not going to douse myself with, uh, with a, a lavender or eucalyptus all at one time. What I'll do is I'll mix it with the carrier oil and I'll, and I'll basically reapply it every, pretty much every three to four hours. I'll just apply a little bit on, the, on, the, on your pressure points, which is your pulse points here, the back of your neck, the bottom of your feet. And so we're going to, and I'll show you that as we go along, but those are the, the best places to, to put your um, essential oils 
whenever you are having issues. But again, very, very small, minute doses, and also mixed with the carrier oil. So carrier oils, and we'll go over which carrier oils um, that, you can, that, that is best to use as well. What are essential oils and why are they powerful? So the oil penetrates the cell wall. So basically, imagine this right here. This is your cell wall and the viruses is living in your cell wall. The essential oils actually could, could actually um, penetrate the outer membrane of your cell wall. So because it kills bacteria, it kills viruses, it kills fungus, it's able to penetrate at a faster weight. As soon as you it quickly transport the oxygen and nutrients within the cell. When you smell the essential oils, like right now I'm diffusing the essential oils. When you smell the essential oils, the limbic brain system is for the, it controls your emotions and memory. So basically, as soon as you smell it, it's going to go into your nasal cavity here, and it goes into your olfactory system. The olfactory system is basically, there's an olfactory bulb here that it goes straight to right here, which is in your limbic system. Your limbic system controls your emotions and your memories. It also affects your hypothalamus, and your hypothalamus is what regulates the pituitary gland, which balances your hormonal system, it regulates your blood pressure, it pretty much is your regulator for your body, is inside your hypothalamus. Essential oils can penetrate and, and uh, can kill, basically it penetrates your cell walls, and it kills whatever viruses, parasite, bacteria that is living there, for, uh, living there. and it does it at a safer Safer rate is not wrecking the havoc on your body like antibiotics do. Um, so, but I do believe there's a place and thing for everything. So the methods of absorption, the method, methods of absorption is inhalation. So basically you're breathing it in, you're smelling it. This is another way to actually um, get the essential oils is through a diffuser. When you diffuse, everybody gets it. So when you diffuse, the, everybody in the room gets the, gets the same therapeutic qualities when you diffuse it. So if there's a stomach bug going on at home, you diffuse. You want to make sure nobody else is going to get the stomach bug. So you diffuse. You'll put dill in there. You'll put uh, fennel in there. You'll put um, lavender in there. You'll put some lemon in there. Lemon is an anti antiviral, antibacterial. So you'll put these things in the diffuser. Um, the other way is you could just put them on your pressure points. Smell it, put it on the back of your neck. You could also, like for my kids, I've also put it on their pillowcase for when they're sleeping at night just to get them rested, get them calm. Um, so there's so many different ways to, do you want to come in? No, no, I got oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, there's so many different ways to be able to smell them and get them in there. The other way is topical, which is absorbed, which is absorbed through a skin mixed with a carrier oil. So topical means you mix it with the carrier oil. So when you put it in a diffuser, you don't mix it with the carrier oil. You're putting it inside the uh, diffuser directly. When you're mixing it with, uh, when you're putting it on your skin, you're going to actually mix it with the carrier oil. You can use it as a massage. You massage it into your muscle wherever you're having pain at. There's um, peppermint. It's great for pain. It's great for headaches. Um, so there's so many different, different, great um, avenues to being able to use these oils. The other absorption rate is uh, absorbable, absorbable rate is also using it in bath water. So again, you're probably asking like, well, how do you use it in bath water? Because you just said it doesn't mix with water. Well, you're going to put it on Epsom salt. You're going to put it in, you can mix it with a carrier oil and then put the carrier oil inside your bath water. So that way, that's the good way to get it inside your lungs. You can breathe it in. So that's a really good way to uh, get it as well. You do not use directly on your skin because it will cause irritation. The only essential oil that I know that you could use on your skin is lavender. And I would not use it, um, I would not use it all the time on your skin, but if you have a burn or anything like a mosquito bite, you can go ahead and put it directly on there. It will not burn. You do have to make sure you're using a good therapeutic grade of a lavender oil. There's two different types of lavender oil. There's three, sorry. There's spike lavender oil, and then there's the actual pure lavender oil. And then there's a hybrid, which is called lavender, which I, have, I brought lavender here as well. Um, so the therapeutic grade is what actually helps you. If you get one, they have a lot of essential oils that they'll put in perfumes and um, soap powder and things like that. Those are really considered perfume 
essential oils. The ones I'm talking about today are the therapeutic essential oils. So it's very, very important that I just want to make sure that I get that and, and express that. Um, the areas of use, the bottom of the feet, those are a great, great place to put to use for kids is the bottom of their feet. Um, the neck, the forehead, the wrist, the spine, the back of your spine is a good place as well. And anywhere you have sore muscles. If you have a sore muscle on your hip, you know, your, your back of the shoulder, that's a good time to get a free massage for someone and say, hey, can you put some, can you massage some essential oils? So it's a really, really great time to be able to do that. Methods of use, of usage. Um, again, massage oil, lip balms, room, room diffusers. Like again, like I said, you can use them in a bath. Um, that could be a really good way to uh, help children as well. Mood enhancer, first aid. Um, you know, again, first, one of my go-to first aid things. La I, I swear to you guys, lavender and lemon and peppermint is what I keep in my, uh, I mean, I got plenty more after that. But the first aid cabinet, lemon, lavender, and peppermint is what, is what, was what I initially started off with four years ago. And now I've grown beyond that. Hygiene products, household cleaners. Um, I usually would, like if I'm washing clothes, I'll mix it inside of the, uh, my laundry detergent. I'll put lemon in there, and then I'll throw it inside. And then basically, you're getting a fresh, you're clearing all bacteria, you're cleaning. So if you, if you just had like a stomach bug go through the house, and you want to desanitize your, your sheets and stuff, all you got to do is throw some lavender inside of the, um, inside of the soap powder. So your, uh, your soap powder, and then basically wash it. It kills the la it kills the fungus, the bacteria, and the viruses that are inside of it. So uh, insect repellent, appetite suppressants, facial steam, uh, steam baths, shampoos. You can mix it. In. You can put, oh, it's great. If you put peppermint, a dab of peppermint oil in your shampoo and wash your hair, it's very, very invigorating, and it kills um, dandruff. It kills it kills dandruff and all the different things. But it just it opens you up and it's very invigorating and kills anything that's inside of, uh, if, inside of um, if there's any pores inside of your head. So that's really, really good as well. Um, one of the other things that I really love is insect repellent. A good insect repellent is you, using a eucalyptus, using peppermint, lemon, there's lemon balm, there's every herb, they've made, every herb is basically made into essential oil. But the essential oil is stronger. It's a stronger version of the herb. So it's, an, it's good to use, like, you can make a natural insect repellent. So you could get, like, a, a bottle of, you could get a bottle of unscented lotion. And basically, the unscented lotion, one that you're, um, you know, that's hyperallergenic, and you could put your lemon in there. You could put a little bit of eucalyptus in there. You could put some bergamot in there. Um, you know, for, and for kids, I would do, like, lemon, a little, da a little dab of peppermint. Um, so just a little different things you could do to help ward off like insects and things like that. Anybody have any questions at this point? Yes. Could you address the appetite suppressants? Appetite? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the great ones that for appetite suppressants is grapefruit. So grapefruit, uh, lemon is really good as well. Peppermint is good as well. So what I would usually do is I would use it before you eat. So you'll use it before you eat. So you'll kind of like, what I would do is put it on your wrist and kind of smell it before you eat. And then what it'll do is it'll help really honestly curb your appetite. Because right now, I was hungry, really hungry before I got here. <laughs> and I've used some oils, and I'm fine now. I'm sure once I leave here, I'll get something to eat. But it really does. And I'm not saying to use it as a, a dietary for weight loss. But they do have essential oil blends that are for, um, for weight loss, for, you know, for metabolism, um, to speed up your metabolisms. So they have those blends as well. Any other questions? Nope. Are you guys excited about essential oils? <laughs> so carrier oils, almond oil, apricot oil, uh, Jehovah oil, coconut oil, grapeseed oil, olive oil. Uh, oil! If it's an oil, you can use it as a carrier oil. Does that make sense? 
because as long as it's a fatty oil, you can use it. It's just that there are some oils I would not use because I don't want a thick oil on me, on my skin. I don't like the way thick oils uh, would fill on my skin. So I prefer, I would not use the olive oil personally because it's, it's thick and I just, and it's gonna sit there for a while. This right here is um, the one that I have on the tables is a fractionated coconut oil. So it's colorless, it's greaseless, and it's odorless, and it's really, really good to use with essential oils. And um, I got this off of Amazon. I mean, th these honestly, um, things like this that you can mix with, you can get off of Amazon or Whole Foods or go to like any type of, um, some beauty supply stores might carry it, but you can go to a lot of the, even the grocery stores are starting to carry regular coconut oil now. So you can find a lot of things now, um, pretty much that you can use to, uh, to basically mix with as a carry oil. So photosensitivity. Photosensitivity is basically all the essential oils that are on the citrus base. So lemon, bergamot, so these are oils that basically People who are, have sensitive skin, if you have very, very sensitive skin, you don't want to use this oil and then go directly out in the sun and sit on the beach on, a 80 degree, on like a 90 degree day. What you're going to do is, say for example, if I use the lemon or the orange, or if I, um, if I use it or diffuse it, I'll use it, and then if I'm outside, it's fine. But people who are sensitive, you don't want to go and bake in the sun. So you have to just be very cautious, precautious when you are using essential oils or you're losing. I've never had this happen to me, but I know I'm a little bit more of a darker pigment but because I, I pretty much, I tan fine. But I'm sure if someone who has sensitive skin, I would be on a precautious side and say, use it, but don't use it right before you're going out in the sun. So that's just a precaution. Use it, but don't use it before you go out in the sun. So no direct prolonged sunlight. So that's um, a really a good tidbit that I just wanted to make sure everybody knows. So cold, cold and flu de uh, defense. So the cold and defense that we want to use. Uh, so today, the one that we're going to make today, we're going to make a, a blend of lavender, lemon, and peppermint that you guys are going to get to take home. So for cold. You can use clove, you can use eucalyptus, you can use lemon, uh, lavender, cinnamon, thyme, and rosemary. I love using rosemary uh, with the kids. Lemon and lavender are big ones in our house as well. Um, I know for fever, I, use, I usually use lavender and lemon for fevers when my kids have fevers. You can put it on the bottom of their feet or the back of their spine. Um, coughing. One of the, you could also, for coughing, you could also make your own uh, chest rub. So what you would do is you'll get like a, um, you can either get one of the carrier oils or you can get like a, a something that has like a, a lotion or something like that or have a, a, a thickness to it. I wouldn't want to say petroleum, petroleum because um, sometimes petroleum will, it will break down in the petroleum. So I would definitely say just get like a carrier oil if you're going to use a, a chest rub. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix it. You're going to mix it with the, um, I would mix it with the, um, the tea tree oil. And I will also mix it with a lavender and a little bit of eucalyptus. And rub it on the chest and the bottom of their feet. Another thing for coughing, one of my go-tos for coughing is any oils that's a wood. So if it says cedar wood, rose wood, wood is very drying. So wood would dry up your cough. If you have a wet cough, a mucusy cough, wood would dry it up. So you wanna, go, you wanna go to any of the oils that have the name wood at the end of it. That's a woody oil. Grounding oil as well. Uh, congestion, cypress, fir, lavender, spike lavender, and pine. Uh, particularly, I love um, anywhere between lavender and spike lavender for congestion because spike lavender and lavender have uh, a little bit of camphor in it. Camphor is actually, um, it helps with decongestions. And, and it also helps with, uh, you know, the mucus buildup and coughing. So for lavender, if I was gonna do a lavender oil and, and the person is coughing, I would do like a wood and a lavender, a spike lavender or either a lavender with it. Now, if I'm just trying to boost the immune system, I would do lavender, which is pure lavender.
right? So for the flu, lemon, lemon, lavender. Again, you're going to keep hearing lavender a lot in lemon. Um, thyme and rosemary. Now, thyme and rosemary is what we all cook with, like, you know, in spaghetti and a lot of Italian dishes. They use a lot of thyme and rosemary. Um, those items are really, really antibacterial, antiviral. They fight. They are great fighters for you, for your, inside your body system. Sinuses. You got frankincense, lavender, spike lavender again, eucalyptus and peppermint. For fevers, eucalyptus, lavender, peppermint, lemon, ear infections, lavender, chamomile. Um, so honestly, out of all of these things, pretty much I've used everything. I use everything that's listed on this board at one time, at one time or another. And, um, and this is what I, this is pretty much what my family, what we use and what I tell everybody that I meet to use. I'm like, oh, you got to go get some essential oils. You're sick. You're coughing. Go get essential oils. So honestly, um, I consider this the, the modern first aid, first aid kit that we, on, that we all really should have or I would recommend you guys have. So this is a picture of a person who have like, say for example, if you had issues. So if this person had the gastro issues, these are the ones you would use for gastro. It's peppermint, lemon, ginger, clove, lemongrass. For women health, if you have cramps, clary sage is wonderful for menstrual, uh, menstrual cramps. And it's also good for just pain itself. Um, I remember I used clary sage uh, when, I was in, uh, in labor, when I was in labor. It helps, it helps to increase your labor so you can move it along, so you can bring it along. So you don't use it. You don't use it before it's time for you to go on labor. But when it's time for you to go on labor, you use the clary sage. It's wonderful. Um, cell protection. Um, cell protection. So these are for people who need cell protection. So people who have like autoimmune immune issues. Um, so cell protection is frankincense, sandalwood, lavender. And I, I'm going to tell you this in, in this in the most safest way that I can say. Frankincense is such an amazing, amazing cellular combater. So it combats and it will go through in your cells and it will really, really protect your cells, but it will also help flush irregulated cells, okay? So if that, if that makes any sense. So cell protection is really, really good. So frankincense is really good for that, for cell protection. For hormones, uh, clary sage, minister progression, um, antimicrobial lemons, cinnamons, tea tree oils. So any of those items are pretty much are really, really good for the antimicrobial. Um, at this point, does anybody have any questions? Yes. I'm um, I'm starting to see a lot of Western physician medicine, uh, physicians actually um, are welcoming this. And I've actually went to my doctor's office. When, honestly, when I gave birth to my son and I asked him, can I bring my diffuser? They told me, absolutely. I had my oils out. They were happy. The doctor was like, this is great. Thank you. You got the whole ward smelling great. So honestly, pretty much all the hospitals um, I believe they're welcoming the essential oils now. So they're starting to open up to it. I mean, all, this is, all the hospitals over in England diffuse lavender. They've been diffusing lavender for years inside of the hospitals, and they have less of a secondary infection inside of their hospitals. So it's only a matter of time that we kind of need to catch on to the use of the essential oils in, inside, of, you know, inside of what we're doing here today. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. I think there, I think with every, uh, I think with everything, there's always going to be a, a controversial of whether, you know, whether some things are good or bad. Um, 
For personally, I usually tell a person um, first is you always do a skin test first, and you want to put use the skin test on the inside of your arm, and you just you mix it with the carrier oil and see how and if you react to it, then you shouldn't use it. Now. In terms of, um, there's been, so, like I heard, there was so much controversy about lavender oil. Okay. There was, there was a lot of controversy about lavender oil for kids, saying that it was, um, it would speed up the hormonal process, right? But what they found out was through those studies is that um, they weren't using the therapeutic grade of lavender oil. And now, um, cause I, because of the line of work that I do, I do a lot of uh, kinesiology. So I usually test people to see what essential oils are good for that person, what agrees with that person. I have some clients that come in my office and essential oils does not agree with them. Their body does not even want essential oils. It does not want it. And there are some people who their bodies is just like, oh, yes, I'm home. So really what I honestly do is I've tested my kids and other kids for the, for the lavender oils that I carry, and I have boys. And they test it fine for the oils that it agrees with their body. Um, but there are some people who their makeup of their body just not, don't want. So I think it really has to go with your makeup, too, of your body. And my, my rule of thumb is if you go smell an oil and it does not, and, it, and you smell it again and it doesn't smell good to you, naturally, you are instinctively probably should not use it because that's your innate ability to, to really have a, a, a kind of like alarm, like, no, that's not, that doesn't agree with me. Don't use it. I wouldn't use it. If you have one and you smell it and you feel, I'm drawn to it, I like it, uh, especially if you're sick and you're like, for some reason, that just makes me feel better when I smell it, then more than likely that is the oil that is the one that is safe and, and right for you. But I think, you know, just like the herb, in the herbal community, there was a lot of controversy. I really honestly think that you have to just uh, make a choice for yourself and just make an educated choice. But it has to be, I really believe that it really needs to be a therapeutic grade. Like a lot of the shampoos, like when you said the shampoo had tea tree oil, it might have had a really cheap, like synthetic version of the tea tree oil. Because I've used, I use tea tree oil all the time. I use a pure version of it and I'll put it in my shampoo, and I'm fine. And there's tea tree oil in like, uh, if you do a homemade toothpaste, there's, so they're fine. It, it might have just been the brand too. It could have been a synthetic version of the tea tree oil. Because a lot of perfumes, soaps, and, and they use a synthetic version of the essential oil. They do not use a therapeutic grade of the essential oil. So it's a little different. Um, any other questions? Yes. Oh, no. Okay, so the, the essential oils that I'm actually diffusing is I'm doing Valor and, la and actually I'll pass this around. So I'm doing Valor and Lavender. So Valor is what they call a chiropractor in the bottle. So Valor basically aligns you mentally, physically, and emotionally. So I decided to diffuse that for all of us to get that nice clarity today after, we, after everybody went to work today. So um, I've been diffusing Valor for my uh, clients in the office, and they absolutely love it. So I'm doing Valor and Lemon, because Lemon is antimicrobial, is antiviral, is antiseptic. So I am, um, so you see how she didn't like it? She probably don't need it. She probably didn't. I'm retired. So, but um, and Lemon, yes. Nope. I, what I did is I did a little bit more lemon. So what I did is I did three drops. So and when you're doing a diffuser, it's totally different than when you're doing combinations for when you're doing a massage. Usually for like for so if I have children in the room, I would do like two, two or three drops of lavender and maybe like two or three drops of lemon and diffuse that. For an adult, if I have a like a, an adult, you know, guest party or dinner party going on. I will probably do like six to seven drops of a lemon, six to seven drops of a, of a peppermint or something, or like a rose, just to like kind of spruce up the area because we can handle it more. So um, really, I just kind of do a drop, 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 because <laughs> I know it's for us. So I didn't count them, but I'm, that's just a rule of thumb on how I do it. <laughs>